In this video, we're gonna see how to make renders from this to this using Photoshop. What's going on fellas, I'm Geo and this is Geo Creations. You can find me on Instagram as Geo German. Let's jump right into the video. If you're following me on Instagram, you may have known this poll. We can see a lot of people leaning towards realism. Hmm, totally understandable. That's basically personal preferences. But don't get me wrong. Realism is not enough to draw attention, you know, uh, let me explain. In this series of images, which one grabbed your attention the most? I bet this is the one because it stands out. I'm gonna share my workflow on achieving this result in this video. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let's import the renders. I'm keeping the ratio 4 to 5 for Instagram optimization. I've also took the top and the bottom portion. Uh, let's bring it on. And mask out the edges so that it will get a clear nice image and we are good to go. Okay, let's compose the image. If you have trouble composing your image, go check out this video by tapping on this i button. Okay, first let's look on the ways to make the render more interesting. This seems like a nice evening, right? But the sky is boring. Let's bring in the alpha channel which I took as an additional output from Lumia. Let's select the white area and mask it from the main layer. Now we got rid of our boring sky. Let's look for something interesting from Google. Oops, uh, it's evening sky. Hmm, this feels good. Let's adjust it. If you noticed, I've placed a stagnant water body here to reflect our building. But unfortunately, this is not doing its job properly. So we're gonna fix it. I'm using the material ID from Lumion to mask it out. Let's flip our building. Now copy the same layer, disable the mask and reduce the opacity so that it looks more natural. Now we're going to adjust the lighting. I really like to use Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw to do this. Let's make it a smart object and let's go to filter Adobe Camera Raw if you're a Photoshop CC user or you can just use Lightroom. Both of them are actually the same. Here you will get almost everything to play with the lighting. The image is really underexposed. Let's increase the exposure a little bit. Now let's fix the dynamic range. Now we can barely see any details over here. So let's pull the shadow slider which brings out the details from the shadows. Let's reduce the highlights a little bit. While playing with the lighting, just place a cap on the shadows and lighting by clicking on these two buttons. Basically what it does is, it warns you if you are losing details in some area. The blue areas are the places we lost detail in the shadows and the red areas are the places we lost detail in the highlight. Okay, now the lighting is fixed. Now let's fix our color theme for this. I'll explain why you need to do that. Sticking to a color theme actually helps you with your presentation. If you follow a certain style in your presentation sheet, your render should also follow that. Simple, basic rule. I'll show you exactly how to do that. You can use this site called Adobe Color Wheel. I've linked that in the description. Go to the site, choose the color scheme you want. I'm choosing the complementary scheme because there are only two dominant colors in this image. Let's match the color of the building, bring our color palette into Photoshop and let's try to match those colors. For that, you can use selective color option or the HSL tab in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. Let's take down the blues. We need to draw attention only to the red. So I'm increasing the luminance and saturation a little bit to the reds and oranges as well. And the greens are oversaturated for our color theme. So let's fix it by bringing down the saturation and the luminance. Also, you can adjust the hues to make the color accurate to your color theme. And now let's come back to the basic tab. And the section over here is responsible for making your render more dramatic. 
The texture slider creates a bump by calculating the contrast of your material and the clarity slider which brings out contrast in the midtones and the dehaze slider which basically removes the flat colors thus bringing out the color behind and the saturation slider to control the overall color and the vibrance slider to bring out undersaturated colors. Now it's time for our final touch. Even though you got all the controls in your hand, applying a preset still sometimes makes magic. This one over here is my custom preset which I use in pretty much all of my image. I'm not gonna apply this preset on this layer itself. Let's copy this layer and let's apply the preset on this layer. Now we can tweak the settings in this layer separately. And let's reduce the opacity to control the intensity of the preset. And now we are good to go. These are some of my renders where I use this workflow to make it cooler. Now leave a like if you learned something new, subscribe to join our small community, leave your suggestions in the comments below or leave a DM on my Instagram. Signing out for now, catch you guys in the next video, see ya.